All right, so as part of this video now, what we're going to do is dive into how you should imagine the M-class CPU to be the programmer's model uh, for an embedded software engineer of the M-class CPU. So as the first step, you know, open up uh, Google and what you can do is type these keywords here, you know, ARM Cortex M Programmer's Guide and uh, go after or click on this first link here which says Cortex M for beginners right and the link for uh, the document that is a result of you know this search uh, will be in like the uh, description of this video but once we visit this document uh, you should see something of this nature right it's a 25 page uh, document and it kind of you know guides through what the m class cpu is different parts of it uh, you can take a read uh, but what we are going to do is focus on page number 10, which talks specifically about the programmer's model. And that is this, right? And what I have done is I have downloaded this PDF and I've opened it like in the full screen mode so that you know, I can scribble on it. Now, this part here, this diagram is kind of talking through uh, the modes and privileges of the M-Class CPU. What I want to do is reserve that conversation for the next video and first explain to you as to how you should imagine that CPU in terms of the register set, right? And that's what we have uh, on the right side here, right? So we talked about GPR, the general purpose registers, the status registers and the configuration registers. So all of them are available here. And if you can remember these registers and what they do, you pretty much have nailed what an M-class CPU can do, right? In terms of controlling it, uh, this is the only set of registers that we need to know. All right, so in total, in the general purpose registers, we have 16 of those, so easy peasy. Uh, they're numbered from R0 down to R15. And then down here, we have one, two, three, four, five registers uh, that capture the status as well as help us control uh, the CPU. Set the privilege mode, set the uh, you know operating mode or select stack pointer, that can happen using the control uh, register here, right? The configuration register. All right, so looking at this R0 to R15, uh, I want you to remember something which is R13 here can exist in two uh, or kind of it can have two potential values one is called the msp the other one is called the psp um, so on this cpu the stack that we create for the code to execute the function calls to work there are two kinds of stack we can have one is called the msp and one is called the psp the process stack pointer and the main stack pointer now what these are we'll kind of cover when we are talking about you know, the modes and privileges uh, modes and uh, privileges uh, as part of the next video. But just remember that R13 is used for something called, is used as a stack pointer and a stack pointer is required for C function calls to work, right? That's why we have the stack pointer register. R14 is called the link register. So when you're you know going from let's say foo function to bar function and you have bar two here, so let's say you're inside of the bar function and that function finishes, right, completes. So where should the control written back to? Where should the CPU come back to? It should come back to this line, which is pointing to bar two. So when you are in the bar function, uh, the, the R14, which is also called the link register, is pointing to the, is pointing to the address of the instruction that the CPU should return back to after it has completed the execution of this function, right? It's the link register. It remembers where to come back to after the function call is over. Very important register, right? R15 is called the program counter. And the program counter is pointing to the address from where the instruction needs to be fetched, right? And these three registers, R13, R14, and R15, uh, you should kind of brain tattoo them, right? We cannot use them for general computation, but you can, you can overwrite them. But once you overwrite them, you kind of create a havoc in the system, right? So 
typically people use R0 to R12 for general purpose, meaning you know, load a value in them, perform the computation, save the value in one of these registers, the R0 to R12, and then send it back towards the memory, the load store architecture, right? So these are the general purpose registers with a stack pointer, link register, and program counter. And now the other set of registers where you have the status and configuration uh, are like so. So XPSR is called the program status register. And this register is a combination of three registers behind the scene, right? And we'll see that uh, kind of, you know, in a while. Uh, but then these are called EPSR, APSR, and IPSR. So what is happening is this one register gives you summation or like a union of these three registers. So we need not know these, but we'll take a look at what XPSR is. And while we talk on that, I'll address as to which bits in this XPSR register come from which of the behind the scenes register. So this is the status register, right? It conveys a negative number is generated, is an interrupt, you know, in process, and if an interrupt is in process, which interrupt number are we talking about? Um, is the CPU, you know, uh, performing like, uh, did it result in like overflow? Uh, did it result in a zero uh, generation? That is available here. Then we have some interrupt related register here, priority mask, fault mask, and base priority. So idea is the CPU can have many interrupts, and to each interrupt, you can assign a priority you know, one, zero upwards, uh, kind of. And using the pre base priority and priority mask, you can control uh, which interrupts are allowed to be attended to and which interrupts uh, are, like, kind of to be ignored, right? And this is kind of a binary control, meaning uh, if you have priorities from, let's say, zero to 255, you can choose to attend to all interrupts, which are, you know, priority 10 and less and ignore everything that's you know 11 and upwards that kind of a control uh, you get through these three registers and the final register here control register uh, that has to do with controlling the privilege right which we see here and also it kind of controls which stack pointer to use right and why the two stack pointers the answer to that is very interesting which we'll talk about when we talk about interrupts and exceptions right but let me now do one thing which is uh kind of you know scroll down here and let's talk about the control register so the control register also right for different uh, you know architecture and different class of cpus here uh, different class meaning different uh, micro architectures of the m class cpus it may have kind of you know three bits or two bits uh, or one bit and the idea here is that, you know, using this, the first bit, so to speak, you can choose between MSP or PSP, and then, you know, configuring the zeroth bit, you can select whether you want to be in the privilege mode or, you know, the non-privilege mode, right? And what the modes are, we'll also come to that in the next video. Uh, but this is what the control register is, and now, kind of let's go down and talk about uh, the XPSR, right? So this is the XPSR. And as you can see, what's happening here is you have these different bits here that convey if a negative number was generated, a zero was generated, carry was generated, uh, I forget what V and Q is, uh, right? And then you see that the nine bits here, like eight down to zero, they convey if an interrupt happened, then which interrupt happened, right? And then these bits here uh, are kind of, you know, conveying whether the current instruction is like, you know, having an if condition built into it. Like, is it a conditional, um, uh, what is it, conditional instruction or not? Uh, so this is kind of um, the EPSR, the EPSR register only has these bits. The APSR only has these bits, and the IPSR uh, has these bits. And at this point, I'm thinking I might have got IPSR and EPSR, you know, backwards. But you can do a Google search and you know, kind of confirm that. Uh, but the idea is that three 
resistors, the union of them is represented as the XPSR or simply PSR, right? Or in some cases, it's also referred to as CPSR. So all the three nomenclature or the names are same, right? All right, so with this then, hopefully, you know, a quick recap would be that in order for you to nail down the ARM M class CPUs, as a software engineer, embedded engineer, what you need to know is that there are 16 registers out of which you can play with 13 registers for computation. The three registers at the bottom are 13, R14, and R15 are special in nature. They're reserved for stack pointer, link register, and program counter. And then you have five register which provide status and allow you some control, right? And you should absolutely brain tattoo this. A side note now, which is the registers here, so if you, on on the M-class controller that you're working with, the CPU that you're working with, if it happens to have a floating point unit to do the floating point operation, then these are the registers that would be available to you. These are like the general purpose registers and status register, but for floating point uh, unit, you know, when the floating point operations are enabled. And that's about it. So these are the registers that you should absolutely know about. And in the next one, we'll talk about uh, the modes, privileges, and how interrupts work.